Hello everyone, in tonight's video I'm going to continue with a series of videos that I'm uh, making and that's going to be comments on your flies and tonight I'm going to discuss stimulator uh, I got a pic two pictures actually from uh, one of the viewers and it's a stimulator of course and I'll first give my comments on this one and uh, later I'll just tie a fly and say and show how, how I think I should uh, or you should uh, correct some of the possible mistakes you can make when tying a stimulator. I have to admit that I haven't been tying stimulators for a long time, at least not in this uh, more or less uh, original concept with heckle all through the body and thorax. Uh, I usually do it without heckle, I mean then it's not a stimulator but well you get a point. Anyway, uh, first I'll start uh, the choice of materials for the stimulator in this photo uh, deer hair is used and as we all know deer hair flares more uh, in this photo it didn't flare too much if you ask me it's just perfect uh, it has nice curve and that's one of the points i want to talk to uh, because it's quite difficult to get uh, deer hair to listen to you if you don't know how how what you're doing like how to make it actually now on the plus side, I would say hook choice is perfect, obviously. I mean, this is more or less stimulator hook. I, I'm, I'm supposing it's a Tiemco 200R. I'm not sure, but I, I think it's that one. And uh, then curve of the wing, wings is perfect, meaning that all those hairs are not only tip, tips aligned, but also the curve is going into each other like it's all the curves are going on, on the same side that they're, they're not going all the always so uh, and I would say good heckle sizes are and it's not over heckled especially in abdomen area where most people that I've seen are actually putting too many reps and there is no need for that uh, thorax heckle is a bit larger than the abdomen one which is also good uh, one of the biggest downside of this fly is obviously um, I would say crowded eye and that's all and one more thing there is an under fur in the deer hair under fur, under fur in deer hair uh, can diminish buoyancy but uh, mostly it actually affects how you stack your hair if you have under fur it stacks more difficult that's all now, also I was told that, uh, this viewer told me that he likes to trim the hackle from the underside to make it sit lower in the film, which is also a good idea always. I mean, I love low, lay, low riding flies, so I wouldn't make exception with this one as well. I would also trim it if necessary. Uh, that's actually why I don't use abdomen hackle most of the time. So I like those low, low laying flies. Now, let's just hop into tying. I haven't been tying stimulators for a long time, which maybe you can see, maybe you cannot, but I, I wouldn't say this, these are perfect, but these are two best ones I've, I've got. I'll show you another one. This one I a little bit experimented with the elk here type of a head, just for fun, and I think it looks okay. Uh, I also used grizzly heckle for the thorax. This one is pretty bad. I was experimenting something else, I'm not sure what, but I messed up. Obviously heckle. Another one with the elk hair head. That turned out okay. Not bad, I guess, but still not, not good. And so on and so on. So instead of showing you my failures and successes, I'll just go and tie one of these. Uh, hook I'm going to use size 16 that's the closest one I have to stimulator hook it's barbless and the model is well I get these here in China and I would say it's heavy hook heavy wire but I like it I mean this this fly is pretty buoyant so you don't need to worry about that I'll start with a thread which is not very specific for st uh, stimulators because the color is not uh, orange or something that screams a little bit more uh, rather dull one so i'll start on 
one third more or less and as soon as the thread catches on itself I'll cut the excess and add wire and I'll add wire on the far side of the hook far side of the hook will be because the wire will go under and over meaning that I will actually skip displacing the tail not so important in this fly but it's just a matter of I me trying to develop a habit now I can try to catch a tail over here but I'm not gonna do that right now I'll cover everything and catch the wire because it's easier to control later I go a little bit into the bend as you can see now for this purpose I'm using all-purpose mule deer hair by, by nature's spirit I also tried uh, natural white tail mm, wasn't super happy with it it flared a li little bit too much for my taste ex caddis by nature uh, nature spirit also flared too much elk was the best choice I think but this is size 16 so I think it's too stiff for the 16 and that's why I went with mule deer and it, it's good the only downside of this hair that I got is that it's like extremely extremely full with under fur and this under fur for some reason is super difficult to remove as you can see it has under fur here it has like ridiculous amount of under fur here so I guess it's winter coat but I'm not sure I can't say that I'm removing this I'll probably do it after I stack it one more time so I'll stack the tail I mean you can choose not to it's not super unstacked but I'll just do it neat way but it's not necessary like fish won't mind uh, properties of the fly won't be affected so you can just choose not to if you if you want so after I stack it grab it and luckily under fur went out without my help now I'll just decide on the length of the tail right now spin the bobbin counterclockwise so the thread jumps into my fingers and then oops I didn't spin it enough okay okay now I did now as you will see I'll just go around in these open turns and I will stop where I, st I started my uh, first wind of the thread okay I'll pull on this and then I'll just break the hair I don't need to use scissors well, maybe I, I do for some of these. Okay. This is okay. Now, I will use Hackle in gray color. I colored this one in super old. And as you can see, it has this curve. It's not super nice and flat. So it's pretty unpredictable, at least for me. Uh, sometimes it will just go as I want it like this. Sometimes it will turn around and go forward which I don't like so let's see with flat thread I'll cover here over here and as you reach the, like the tail over here you can just decrease the pressure and I will show you why if you increase it will flare more if you decrease the flare will be under control so I'll just with controlled pressure I'll control the flare I'll remove the barbs of the rachis. I'll try to put this on the side and cover it up. Okay. Now I'm going to use dubbing which I made a long time ago. It's some cat's fur, some UV dubbing. It dubs perfectly as you will see you can make the thick noodle you can make thin noodle whatever you want you you to do with this one you you can do 
because like this this fur goes so beautifully around thread that uh, it's incredible okay back and now I'll go and cover the body sometimes what happens is I make a first wind and this breaks as you can you saw it right now that's why I did it and I started talking about it so how I salvage that I do the same and I make thread base here okay it's quite old it's like 10 15 years old saddle and because I colored it I guess I made some mistake and made it a little bit more say fragile now it rotated on me which I didn't want but that's why I said it's quite unpredictable okay I end with the turn on the top of the hook now I'll go with wire under under and over catch the feather over here as you can see now what I like to do is I like to catch it with two reps and then I'll go relatively fast through those wraps and by doing so I actually avoid pre um, compressing those barbs some say and I cannot disagree because if it doesn't work for me it, it can work for someone else some say that you should go in zigzag motion through those but it just doesn't work for me as well as going fast and this trick I picked up from one of Kelly Gallup's videos it's a good trick. Now I'll just go and cut the rake is over here and that's it. Now instead of cutting I'll just rub my finger into this. Now I have base. Now I don't know if you noticed probably not but I placed wire and rake is on the side so you can see that from this side from profile it's relatively thin but this side it makes it a little bit wider so why I did that because I have flatter and more wide base for my deer hair now another thing to consider is the amount of deer hair don't take too much because you don't need too much uh, this is high riding fly meaning that hackle is the uh, primary uh, factor of buoyancy of your fly this is more or less for your eyes to see so again clean the under fur very important and the short ones and as I said I may do it one more time after stacking and as you can see there is some under fur here but it's okay I'll remove it now now the thing is when you take this don't manipulate it too much what I want to do here is measure where I want to cut and I'll cut it immediately I'll spin the bobbin holder counterclockwise and I'll go on the top and then one rep oops run away from me I'll press it down a little bit one two reps and then pull hard pull hard pull hard I want to cover up everything here okay this is okay now I will add the same hackle as I used because this thorax area is going to be wider thus I can use the same width of hackle and it will be a little bit 
wider in my case because of the base. Okay. Just covered it up. A little bit of thread control won't hurt. I spun the bobbin holder counterclockwise. Two reps, three reps, and I'll add dubbing now. I'll use orange one, so at least a little bit of stimulator uh, characteristic here. But usually you'll have abdomen one color, uh, which is quite screaming, I would say, like yellow or something, and then orange or green or something like that, but not natural ones, but crazy ones. And then it's like, a, I mean, it is a tractor pattern. You can also use dubbing, if you look at this, if you keep dubbing with a relatively soft trap, you can control, you can control the flare as well. Now I want to go down and add a little bit more dubbing, obviously. Okay leaving enough room for the head. Okay, this will be enough here. Now I'll make, hold the wing and make one half of a turn, I guess, and then hold it again because of the pressure. And then you can go and spiral it down towards the eye in as many turns as you would like. I have like three, three and a half. Okay. Two. Now keep the pressure on the thread. Because if the flat thread is already here, you can just go and go and we finish the fly. One, two, three, and four nice little neat head press the blade against the thread and let's rotate the fly and see where we where we are at it did flare a little bit more a couple of hairs but that's okay you can choose to pinch them out I mean, this is fly for fishing it's not for for million likes or whatever so uh, this is it finished stimulated to fly uh, what I did uh, did not say I didn't notice on the original fly from the photo that there are ribs wire ribs uh, you can use wire ribs or easier way you can just wrap the ribs uh, with thread uh, what I would do is I would actually if you have a proper hackle which I don't start here wrap uh, clockwise thread around the hackle and then just wrap it together around the hook and you will reinforce uh, with your thread you will reinforce the hackle and you will make it last longer because trout cannot eat it i mean cut it that easily especially if you make nice uh, relatively thick body where the hackle can just dive in and uh, it can be protected by uh, from trout's teeth like that so that's that's what i would do uh, this nice little stimulator i hope you liked it i hope you learned something from this video if you did please give it a like subscribe and see you next week